Hi folks, it's John from LastChanceIllRestore.com. Just a quick update on one of the restorations we're working on. Uh, this is the 1949 Chev short bed uh, two wheel drive truck. Um, so last video I believe we were talking about the disc brake conversion kit and we had the, uh, this front section installed. We were ready to do um, some of the brake lines, the, the nickel copper lines. You can see with the engine, I don't think we had because the, the lifters and push rods are on back order. So we now have the valve cover um, is just sitting on there. We haven't um, uh, adjusted the valves yet. So we've got the side cover on, we have the tube on the side, and then we've got our spark plugs in, and then we have just the valve cover resting on there for now. So the engine's getting a lot closer. And then uh, we talked about suspension last time in terms of the lever shocks. We didn't have any of the steering components done. So what I'd like to do is kind of share with you and point out a couple of things. Um, this main rod that's going across here that ties in uh, to the end of the spindles, um, this was bent beyond repair. So you can see this, there's two different styles. This is an early 1949 Chev. So um, it could have had one of two style of rods. There's this one, which is a solid rod all the way through with threaded ends. Then there's another style that's a hollow tube. Um, so this one is more robust and is stronger. The one that was on it was the hollow tube, so we upgraded it um, because when this came from Wyoming, it had, it was probably um, towed, I'm assuming, a few times and they incorrectly tied it against here as opposed to the front beam. So this was bent um, a tremendous amount and it was beyond uh, repair for us. So we ended up getting a, uh, this is a remanufactured one with the proper threads. And then you'll see here we have all new grease, we have the new cotter pins. Um, so this has all been redone. You can see the thread. So uh, we've done a rough measurement uh, but we'll be doing a precise alignment later on. So you can see the detail here from um, the earlier video from the back side, you can see where um, we did the king pin and bushing kit. You can see this is all greased and lubricated now. And then we have our um, arm, and then we've got our tie rod and so on. So as you come across this side, you can see the same thing, except now we have everything attached. So we have um, our fitting and it's all greased. And then you come down to this other section here um, and then coming across. So I'll get my fat head out of the way. So you can see all of the steering components are now installed. So everything in terms of braking, steering and suspension in the front is now complete. And when we come underneath the vehicle, um, in the previous video we were talking about running the copper lines and if the camera comes behind me, it'll be able to see the copper line, sorry to bounce all over the place, but you can see we have all new nickel copper lines. This uh, type of, um, of brake line has a lifetime warranty or guarantee. So, um, and we'll just shine the light up there because it's pretty dark underneath here. So hopefully I'm not distorting everything with the light, but you can see we've got nice bends. We're using the original locations for clamping things on. And then you can see uh, we've completed this um, aftermarket um, custom cross member for the transmission, the transmission mount. So we had to fabricate this. You basically get basic brackets and tubing and then you have to modify it to fit. So we'll be doing some more detail work there. Um, we had to go with this cross member because of our upgraded uh, power booster and brake master cylinder kit. So now with, uh, with the disc brakes finished at the front, You'll see we've got the new master cylinder. We have all new uh, lines run. And then on the side here, you can see inside the rail, we have the uh, proportioning valve. And that came as part of the kit, but it doesn't come with all of the fittings that we needed. So, um, and then we had to make our own lines for our application. This is going to be a dummy light for brake fluid. Uh, but you can see all the nice lines up above and down below. And then we have the main line that's running down this side, then it comes across the rail, which you won't be able to see until you come over to this side, and you'll see it coming out as it did with the factory, and then it's coming all along that frame rail, and it's meeting the new flex line at the back. So 
So as we come to the rear diff, we got more light by the window here. You can see uh, we're waiting for the back ordered uh, brass T that will attach the line from the passenger rear brake and the driver rear brake together along with the flex line because this is your main brake fluid line coming in and then it's splitting and sharing both of the rear brakes. You'll see the detail of the bends that we made here. Once again to point out we're using the factory clamps which are correct and we have another one here. Um, what I should have shown in a previous video is this tab was broken off just with corrosion so I made one welded it on when we had it sandblasted and now with the, uh, the epoxy and the paint it looks quite nice here and you can see the back where we have a new wheel cylinder and fittings um, in here so now we have all of the brake lines done the chassis is coming along quite nicely so just a quick little update uh, this is the 1949 Chev uh, regular cab short bed truck. I'm John from lastchanceautorestore.com.